Bowman here from BW1, and in this video, I wanna give you the five awesome things that you need to know about Windows 10. Let's jump right into it since we heard about the announcements earlier today. First thing, Cortana is coming to the PC. So Katana, if you're not sure what that is, this sort of Microsoft digital assistant that first debuted on Windows Phone platform. Now, Cortana comes from the Halo series. It's where they kind of got the name from. It's a digital assistant and it's pretty cool. It does things very similar to Siri and to Google Now. It's kind of a mesh between the two of them. And it's a pretty uh, useful actual tool if you're using it on Windows Phone. It's actually available on the Microsoft Band as well. Now it's gonna be coming to PCs and Windows 10 devices. So what's pretty cool about this is that you're gonna be able to use it for search. You're gonna be able to use it for quick news and information. You're gonna be able to talk to it very naturally. You'll be able to use it for controls as well too. So let's say you wanna play some music, you can just literally say Cortana play music or play certain artists. It'll stop the player play that and you can tell Cortana to be quiet and it'll just kind of stop the music and stop the audio on the device. Now, um, another cool thing is that Katana is going to be able to learn about you and, and from you, and it's going to you're going to be have you're going to be able to have more control over that using Katana's uh, notebook is what they kind of call it. It kind of keeps notes of what you want her to know about you, and she'll have that information available to you and be able to sort of pre-populate those things. Very similar to Google Now, but with more integration and better controls with it. The second thing that is pretty cool coming from Windows 10 is going to be the basically the uniform UI and continuum. I'm kind of combining these together. So Windows 10 is going to look the same across all platforms. So your desktop, laptop, your hybrid convertible devices, your even your gaming consoles are all going to look the same across the board. It's going to work very similar with a similar UI look and feel and you can have similar functionality across the board without too many things really changing or dropping off so it's pretty nice it's going to be able to do that it's going to make it much easier to jump into using a windows device and be able to bounce between using your phone then jumping onto your pc then jumping onto your tablet and so on without having to relearn different uh, ui elements and such and having to change the settings around and that's also going to uh, really take advantage of pretty much windows while onedrive because that's what that's going to allow you to do is basically all your data is going to travel with Windows One Drive as no matter where you go, you're going to be able to use, use your data on whatever device that it is. So it's pretty cool and very integrated in. Next thing, kind of combined with that is Continuum. So what that basically is, is the, the ability to take convertible devices and being able to use them in the modes that they're in very easily and very simply and very smoothly. Um, a good example of this is let's say you have a Microsoft Surface and you're in sort of your Key, you have your keyboard and you're typing in one node and you have a couple other apps open and you decide, well, I want to kind of take this and go in this sort of tablet mode instead. So what you'll do is you'll unplug the keyboard, Windows 10 will recognize it, it'll pop up a little bit of an alert and say, hey, do you want to go into tablet mode? You tap on that, it'll instantly resize the applications for you to make it much more finger friendly and easier to use. And if you want to go back into using keyboard more, more of a desktop-like experience, you put the keyboard back in, it's going to ask you that same question again, and it'll shrink the apps down and go more into a desktop-like experience. So this is pretty cool that they added that. Now, the third thing that's pretty cool is universal apps. So basically, you're going to be able to get one app, and it's going to be able to run on all your Windows devices. A good example of this is Microsoft Outlook app. They're also making a photo app as well too. And they'll have some core applications that's gonna come built into Windows 10. And these apps will work and function the same way across every device. So Outlook will shrink and conform itself to work on a Windows phone, but then will also work the same way, similar on a tablet. And then when you go into a desktop PC as well too, your data's gonna sync across. Everything's just gonna all work in a nice synergistic way it's going to be the same one application no matter what this is going to be really good for app developers so that's pretty cool they're going to be able to make one thing in the store and not have to worry about making it for several different devices and operating systems and such so that's pretty cool the fourth thing it's pretty big is gaming so the xbox one and Windows 10, obviously Windows 10 is gonna be coming into the Xbox One, but you're gonna be able to stream Xbox One games to your Windows 10 PCs and tablets. Pretty epic, pretty sweet. There's not a lot of information on this other than it's pretty much gonna work, uh, you know, this is kind of their answer to PlayStation Now and sort of Nvidia Shield a little bit here. It's only gonna work if you have the devices on the same network, so it's pretty much a home solution for right now. But it's really cool to be able to, let's say you're playing Call of Duty or 
um, whichever game, Call of Duty or some strategy game or anything like that. I don't know if you want to move Call of, down, Call, of, Call of Duty around that much, but let's say you're playing one game and you want to go to your PC and play it, you can do that by just streaming it over and you want to switch to your tablet. For whatever reason, you can switch to your tablet and stream along, along the way as well too. There's going to be an Xbox One application designed in the Windows 10 as well that's going to give you not only pretty much what you get in Xbox One Smart Glass now, but it's, I think it's going to be the functionality that's going to lie to kind of get the streaming going on. We're going to hear more at the Game Developer Conference most likely in March and then we'll we will probably see a launch later this year so pretty epic and um, that's really gonna change gaming for I think a, a pretty good way then the fifth and final thing I think that's pretty awesome coming from Windows 10 is the fact that it's going to be free so this is gonna be a free upgrade for users that are on Windows 7 Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 for the next year after it launches so let's say it launches on October you have up to one year to upgrade to that point so they're basically trying to give Windows 10 out to everyone there and get it to you for free, which is pretty cool. They haven't really announced what they're gonna do after that, after the year is done, but you know, you kind of, right now that's all they're really saying. So those are the five awesome things that are really cool about Windows 10 that we get heard announced today during Microsoft's live event. Um, I really think Oton is pretty cool. Adding that digital assistant there, especially to the PC, and that's going to be able to work across multiple devices as well too. She's going to be able to kind of just follow you around as you want and you'll be able to pretty much systematically control how she follows you. It's pretty cool. It's something I think that can be really a lot better than what Google Now is right now and a lot better than Siri is what is right now and a lot more useful and I think a lot more user friendly. A lot of people probably will want to use it a little bit more. Um, I really think having a uniform UI is a great idea. That's going to allow more familiarity among devices and not and, and not confuse people as much. We're gonna pick up anything that's Windows based and be able to instantly know how to use it. And the continuum feature is just something that's been needed on Windows platform for a long time. So it's nice that convertible devices are gonna become much more easy to use, especially with two in one. So you're not gonna fear you're gonna have a compromise in the user experience, which is I think pretty useful there. Obviously, Universal Apps is the big deal. This is really big, more so for developers, because this is going to allow the development cycle to be a lot easier. They're going to be able to make one application, put it in the App Store, and they don't have to worry about the devices or a different operating system. It's just all going to work no matter what device the user puts it on. The user is going to be able to buy one app or use one application, and then they're going to be able to have synergy where no matter where they are, the app works the same and your settings stay the same so you don't have to have the app set one way on the desktop, one way on the tablet, then one way on the phone. And you have to kind of manually change those settings accordingly. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the gaming feature is epic. I mean, that's kind of a game changer right there to be able to stream Xbox One games. They're taking console games, they're taking what's already they have and allowing that to be streamed around. I think we're going to get some more details about that and some more added services when we hear more about that at GDC. Probably hear more about it at E3 later this year. But I think really hearing that, hey, you can take Xbox One game, stream it instantly. I think that's going to be pretty cool and that's a nice value add to having an Xbox One. And really, it being free, you know, this free upgrade, I mean, that's what Microsoft needs to do. They're basically going out and saying, hey, take Windows 10. We want everything to be Windows 10 now. Please take this. We're giving it to you for free. Please upgrade. Because the, the long play for them, where they really want to gonna make their money is going to be in the services that they offer. And, you know, while they say it's going to be a year, that a year after they launch it, it's going to be free, I have a feeling that's going to be probably extended. It probably, it probably the smartest thing to do is to make the upgrade free for anyone that is, that is upgrading will make the operating system free for anyone that is upgrading from Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1. If it's a bearable on PC or something like that, you probably want to pay for that. I can understand charging for that because there's no operating system on it at that point. But um, I think that's where they need to go. They need to kind of keep this free, very low cost, play on the services level of things. And I think that's going to allow people to adopt the newer versions of Windows a lot more often. Now, there was a lot more things that happened during the event. There's such things as Project Spartan, which is their really, their, their really uh, new browser that's supposed to sort of, uh, it's very thin down and much more about social and sharing. We also heard about a few other tweaks to sort of the control panel and settings. Also, the holograms, a, holo, a HoloLens, rather, Windows sort of augmented reality feature that's going to be added into Windows 10. They have some pretty cool glasses and it has a nice augmented reality they call the HoloLens. I think that's the actual proper name there. A lot more details in about that and also they have um, 
the uh, uh, Surface Hub, which is this big TV that you can use in the workspace, and it's supposed to be more interactive and more collaborative and get get more people involved with work and projects and make it a lot easier for them. Those things I could talk about in a separate video if people want me to talk about those, but I really wanted to focus on really Windows 10 and the five things that I think that are awesome about it. So share your thoughts below and what you think. If you think these are really killer features, if you think I might have missed out on a feature here or something you think is really awesome, list your five below. But yeah, yeah list your five awesome things that you've seen from um, Windows 10 here that you're really excited about. Share your thoughts, give it a yay or a nay, let me know. Also, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps us out. Be sure to connect with us on all social networks, our Facebook fan page and, uh, and our Twitter account. The links to those in the description and at our main website at bw1.com where we have a nice write-up talking about this stuff here. And you can find that also in the description as well, too. Everything is always down in the description box below. You know how YouTube works here. So this is Bowman from bw1.com reminding you to always live your tech world in high definition. Thanks for watching.